Motor vehicle collisions account for a significant number of the emergency responses we go on each year. By now, you've probably either driven past a collision site, seen the headlines, or watched TV footage. So how do paramedics and firefighters deal with these emergency situations? Well, it comes down to training, training, and training. When every second counts, we fall back on those things we've already rehearsed. And our first priority on the scene is safety. When we arrive at a collision site, we position the engine to provide fire protection and serve as a barrier between us and oncoming traffic. Inattentive motorists are a leading cause of death and injury for law enforcement and fire personnel. So the more metal we have protecting us, the better. While the medical team works to assess and stabilize the patient, the extrication team works to assess and stabilize the vehicle. If the vehicle is on its side, then special stabilizers are attached to prevent additional rolling. Once we're sure the vehicle will not move, it is time to remove the patient. Sometimes it is as simple as sawing out a windshield or popping a stuck door with a halogen tool. If the damage is more extensive, then we break out the hydraulic tools. Probably our most versatile tool are the spreaders, sometimes known as the jaws. These can be used to open doors, push up collapsed dashboards, or pry apart pieces of metal. The cutters are used to make purchase points for the spreaders to push from, in addition to removing door and window posts. Airbags can be used to lift vehicles when they're upside down or gain access to patients that may be trapped underneath them. The medical and extrication teams are in constant contact during this process. Here we see a paramedic using a new device to intubate a patient who is trapped in a vehicle. The camera mounted on the curved blade allows us to see the patient's vocal cords on a separate screen. This gives us the ability to ventilate and protect the patient's airways in positions which would have been nearly impossible before. While each situation may be different, our goal is to minimize movement to the patient while removing the twisted metal around them. Speed and accuracy are both important, particularly in high velocity impacts. Generally, the more damage we see to the vehicle, the more likely the patient will have received life-threatening traumatic injuries. So that's how we deal with automobile extrication emergencies. And what's your role in the process? Well, try to avoid needing our services. Drive as if your life and the lives of your passengers depend on it, and it certainly does. Last year, 42,642 people died on our highways, with more than 2,575,000 injured. Pay attention to the road, not your cell phone. Conditions change, and you need to be able to change with them. Make sure that you and everyone else in your vehicle are wearing your seatbelt. And last, if you're approaching a collision scene, please don't pay attention to the wrecked metal. Instead, watch out for any emergency personnel that may be present. We watch out for you. Please watch out for us.